Okay. What? Where are your bells? So disappointing. All right. We'll call this meeting to order. The zoning board adjustment, February sixteenth, twenty twenty-three. Roll call to my left. Chris Whalen. I am Tim Beard, Vice Chair. Scott McCoy. Jeff Kessler. All right. Uh, administration says none. Minutes of November 2022. I know it feels like a long time ago. I know. Isn't that That's weird? Good. That, believe it or not, that was your last meeting. Yeah. We had no cases for December or January. Yeah, no, I... Yes. Only two of us that were here for that meeting that are here today. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I was. yeah. Scott was there. So we want to do Christine. Do you want to? It's up to the board's discretion. You people can vote yeah. to accept, even if they've just read it and they seem that it's all written correctly. If you don't feel comfortable, you can. We cannot have a vote tonight and easily defer and go over the two minutes in February. The two meeting minutes, oh, not February, th in March. March. February's minutes in November, which is relatively okay. easy to do. It's up to you know, keep the board. Yeah, the thing is, what's the... So see, this is Cinnamon Street. See, I'm not sure we have anyone else here, because Herb is the alternate, and he normally would not be here unless I was not here. And I think Ben is no longer on, correct? On ben Nelson? Did he resign? He's on until June. Okay. Yeah, there's and that would be shocking. So far. Uh, no, don't worry, don't have a heart <laughs> until until June at this point. Um, Tim Let's has said that he would take over Sharon. But you're aware that he's resigning? I am not. Well, he's up for a renewal in June. Oh, fine. Okay. I don't believe he's okay. resigning. Okay. All right. Okay. So six of one, half done. All right. I'll just say I, I read through it because she sends them ahead of time. I read through the minutes and I didn't s see anything that I was I had a hard time with. I don't know if you did, Scott. I have not had a chance to read it. Okay. Um, and I don't know what the, I would recommend we just the post table this yeah. until we, we know we're going to be here in March. So, uh, a motion for that? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, postpone the meet reading of the minutes until the next uh, meeting of the zoning board. Second? I second. Chris is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We will do that next meeting. <coughs> All right. Do you want to talk about anything, Christina? I've never read into the first case. No, absolutely nothing for you, me. Okay. I thought you had to say something about the case that we're not going to hear tonight. That, not yet. Second. Oh. That's the first case is 1-1. One, one, Four oh, one is the right. first case on the agenda, so That's you can right. follow through. All right, so case one one four one one sixty nine Sunby Street LLC owner John Lividez agent requests a variance from the terms of Article oh, four. Is it? Yeah, that's the other way. It's four. Yes. Article four, section four oh nine dot seven of the zoning ordinance to reduce the required off street parking for residential. Property is identified as map 112, lot 032, and is located at 169 Sunapy Street in Industrial Zoning District. And I see that John is on Zoom with us, so you can take it away and uh, let us know what's going on and what you want to do. Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks again. Good to see you all. Um, we are looking to ask for a variance of lowering the parking count from 2.0 per unit to one point two five per unit. This would be taking the total parking from really that one. Sorry, did someone say something? Yeah, I, the information that got sent out was it was two point oh to one point seven. One point five. Let me interject for one thing. Sorry, I apologize, John. Hold on one second. Hunter what? Hunter asked me this week if it was legal to submit a lower rejection request during the meeting and I said legally John can do it because the the letter went out as stating he's just asking for a reduction and I have attached all his new information with uh, and I thought I attached the new information first and his, his the submittal you got second 
They're identical with just the lower, the lower number. number. Right. Okay. And obviously, it, you could go over both the cases. But I, I did state that John could ask for even lower because in essence, and, and in essence, he's granting a reduction. And so I believe I was able to legally state he could do that because I didn't write in the, in the public notice or the mailings a specific amount for the request. Okay, okay. Well, well I, can, I can talk everyone through it and maybe I don't sure. have a request that it's for a specific number and we can talk through the files you have. I think if you've got 1.5, is that what you said? I only have, yes, the one, I only have the one point. Yeah, Christina yes. and I have been trading emails, as she said, um, and the, the request, I think, sounds like you've got the 1.5. And the 1.7. I do not have a 1.25. Okay. We've been, as, and, and I can, what I can do is talk through our thought process here and explain where we've gotten to and the reasoning why we'd like to get to 1.25. The... Discussion started at 1.7 because we didn't truly understand what we might be able to get. But as we look, as we've been looking at our 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 site plan, the goal here and the reasoning for lowering parking count has to do with a few main points. First and foremost, it the the parking need is not that, and the second point would be by not having this parking, we can maintain or we don't have to have as much impermeable pavement solution along the river there. And so our goal in this is to preserve the natural landscape. And I think you guys have the site survey. You can see certain sections where the current gravel parking lot is. And our ultimate goal is to try to only pave the areas where there is currently gravel parking. And so as we've been going through this with our um, civil engineer and our site plan, We've been trying to slowly pick out spots and remove, remove spaces so we can maintain the natural landscape. And from our previous meetings, there's been a lot of concern about traffic, cars coming in and out. And so I think this, in addition to the natural landscape, this also assists in limiting not only residents, but other people parking there overnight and people utilizing the parking lot when they shouldn't be. Um, I just sent, Christina, I sent you uh, a study from New Hampshire Housing Authority that states that only 15% of people in low-income housing tax credit deals have more than two cars. Okay, that would uh, mean John, can I hold you for one second? Yeah. So I can go back to my email and print that out for everyone. Oh, I apologize. At what time? Because I just looked through my email. What time did you send that? Um, it might have just. I just got it from Jim at New Hampshire Housing Authority. It should have come to you. Like like a half an hour. Yeah, yeah six six ten or okay. six fifteen. You keep talking. I'll go get that. Okay. So in that study, it says that only fifteen percent of tenants in low income housing tax credit deals have two two cars. Twenty two percent have no vehicles. And so um, I'm sorry that I started one point two five and mean to make it seem like I was asking for something that wasn't submitted, but our, as Christina said, our discussion, she said I could technically ask for anything, so I, I started at that number. Using the 15% of people who do not have vehicles at these, that parking ratio would be um, the 81 cars or 1.15. We don't want to meet just the minimum. We believe that some... Yeah. Some people are going to have cars, and the last thing one is burning. And as I've been very open and uh, candid with you in the past, I mean, 1.3 at 91 spaces, I think, is equally sufficient. Um, and I think generally, I'd just like to have a conversation with all of you to understand how you, you know, evolving parking and zoning changes over the years. And we're trying to. Um, as I said, preserve the natural landscape, but also all the costs we can save here can go into the building. And as everyone knows, costs are extremely high. The Hampshire Housing Authority has just increased a lot of their per unit limits in terms of what they can invest into a building. And so by removing parking costs, we can 
utilize those costs actually on the inside uh, of the building. Jason, the other case got pushed to next month, just so you know. Again, please. New Hampshire Housing Authority. And how would I get a look at this? Would you? I could send a whole report. It's quite long. Do you have I, the link? I like the link. Link. I have. But all I was sent was a uh, a PDF file. Okay, I'll I can send me the PDF then, and then I can get them the links. I should be able right. to figure it out from that. Do you want this? Can you tell me what kind of housing it is? Um, it's been several stages and a lot of discussion in the last few years about it, so I'm just not 100% to speed with it. Um, is yeah, it it's, it's workforce housing. It's going to be 70 units of workforce housing, so studios, one bedroom, and two bedroom apartments. Okay, so 60% uh, six, of the median area income. Right. So. The tenants will roughly be making forty to sixty thousand dollars a year. So a total of seventy units total. Correct. Okay. Presently, they have approved building plans with the hundred and forty spaces mm -hmm. that is required. Mm -hmm. They're on the plans mm -hmm. that are all approved. This organization wanted to come in and requested a reduction to have more green space, less paving potentially, like they yeah. said, I guess less, less vehicles in and out. I, I mean, as an argument, but that's so. But um, the plans were approved, I believe, in 2017 by the planning board on the same year when the ZBA approved the, the variance for housing in this structure in an industrial zone. This is the mill. Yes. The old mill. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the beautiful mill. And, and the reason for going lower than we had sent the 1.5, and I, I actually finally got this report today that showed that 15% have two cars and 22% have zero cars. So um, as we've got more information, we've been working to conserve, you know, limit the pavement, as I've said, to, to speak one line. Was there any rule that there has to be paved parking spots? No, so absolutely not. You do not have to pave it. It could be all hard path. So technically you could pave the amount of parking spots you want and just have the others gravel. Uh, uh, and it, absolutely. Um, and which would prevent yeah, the impervious material. It, it, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, my one concern there is I'm not a, a civil engineer and there's runoff and storm water and a whole bunch of other things that went into our what that goes into the site plan so i'm not sure how that might affect the river in terms of having some pavement and some um gravel but i, I think the great thing about this site is that if we lower our parking count now and we're approved for that and that in the future parking needs change we have the space and ability to expand the parking but in the in the short term our plan is to have a, a paved lot that is, we can plow, maintain, landscape, and offer, you know, the, this workforce housing project the same type of quality the, you know, market rate housing project would have. So you want a, a total of how many parking spots at the 1.25? That would be 188 spaces. So that gets you to 1.26, 88 spaces. Opposed to the 140 required. 91 is a 1.3. And we have, just so you, you know, we have 23 studios. So assuming that, you know, one person would be living in a studio at the 1.25 ratio, you take 23 spaces out for the, for the balance of those uh, the remaining units that are not studios, you'd be at a 1-4 ratio. If you go to 1.3 on the overall project in the same methodology, 
the studios each get one. For the remaining units, you'd have a one five or one four five ratio he for the balance. He has these reports in their little. So you changed. I'm just looking at this other email that you've got here. That you changed to a new program where you've got 23 studios, 27 one-bedroom units, and two uh, 22 bedroom units. Correct. That's correct, and that hasn't changed, right? No, it, it is not. There's some. There's a chance as these workforce housing projects have a lot of moving pieces for funding and income amounts and, and different funding sources coming in. So we are looking at trying to see if we may be able to pick up a few more two bedrooms. Um, but as I stated, the, the housing report shows that, you know, it's very rare that there are um, two car owners in these projects. And it's actually more common that people don't have a car. Sorry, hard time relax. If you don't have a car, I, I mean, you can't pay your rent or your own welfare, and you know, uh, it's going to be forty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Well, it's, where's the most low-income housing? Is that like in the Manchester areas and yes. the inner yeah. cities? Yeah, cities. So uh, we're not. Uh, those are studies. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would assume everyone's most likely going to have a car here. I'm just pointing yeah. to the study. Right. I mean, what is, what's your anticipation for guest parking? Uh, uh, how many? slots do you anticipate for guest parking if you've already counted for everybody's numbers here? Well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, in terms of accounting for everyone's number here, if we assume, let's assume that the 1.25 ratio, we have one, we have 90 bedrooms in that case and we have 88 spaces, so theoretically we've got a space for every single bedroom, which from the study, it seems that there aren't going to be households with two cars. But if 88 spaces, we have 18 extra spaces for guests, potentially. If you assume one each um, apartment has one car, which is what the study points to. That's if we go to 1.3, we have um, 21 guest spaces. How are you, are you going to have a situation where you're limiting the number of occupants per unit? I mean, a one person in a studio, two people in a, in a one bedroom, or, or, or can it be any number of people in these things? Our pro we have a property management company that manages workforce housing, and everyone comes in, is applied, they, get, they have interviews, and everything is managed through them, so income is checked. You can't, this isn't a situation where someone can have five people in the apartment. Uh, I'm, I'm, so there is, the answer is that there is a limit per, uh, per unit, depending on how many bedrooms there are. So a studio apartment, you're saying, is one bedroom, so you're saying yes. only one person can live there. I, I'm sure two people could live in a studio yes. and two they, people could live in a one bedroom. So there is no limit. I mean, other than what somebody can do. So a two people could live in a studio apartment, correct? Three people could Correct. live in a two-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. So that sort of, okay, that's, that's my question. Mm -hmm. And what do you anticipate using in terms of, of uh, when you do snow removal or snow plowing? Do you have a place to put all of that, given all of these spaces, or are you going to use this overflow area that you may or may not develop later on? It's on the drawing. I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I'd like it pointed out to me. Is it one of these? The, yeah. the, site, plan was, the site plan was approved and all of the, there's a snow removal area called out. All of that still exists irrespective of these parking spaces. That area down there in the middle. What are you talking about? This here? Yeah. This here? Yeah. We've got, uh, what's this other diagram? See where it says, uh, Snow storage. Yes. Yeah. So, which diagram? I can't is, read any which of that diagram is, is the one that we're supposed to be looking at? Okay, the 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 one with the one red square. Okay. Do you have one with a one red square? I have one with, with two. Two. Red squares, yeah. And you have and you have one <laughs> with one. Okay. The one with I would one. Stick to the one with two red squares. Right. I know. I, I know, John. So hold on. Okay. The one with the one he originally submitted, which is the ones you all got in the mail. 
when he was asking for the 1.7, I believe. Then he requested, could I ask for less? And I said, you, you could request less, and, and that would be then at your purview to decide. Is it this one? The one red square was when he was asking for 1.7. Yes, that one. This one is where he's asking for the one point. Uh, well, this two red square was for the 1.25, right, John? The, the, the two red square is a better, shows better where the current parking lot is. And I've highlighted in the two red squares, you can see the shaded area. That's where we would be, that's area right now that is not gravel, and that's grass or natural landscaping. And so why I sent that in was to point out that these are the two areas where if we can get to that lower parking count, we'd be able to save, or we wouldn't be um, putting these parking spaces in, and we can maintain the current landscape. And so it doesn't affect stormwater, snow storage, or anything. This is just us eliminating, you know, by the mill, that's a big berm with trees on it, sits close to the river. The other longer rectangle is in a hillside, um, and the furthest area from our, from the housing. Yourself. Some of this will happen because you have uh, shoreline protection and everything on the river. Assuming that's part of the planning board approvals. Well, they, did they already approve? They already approved it for the 2017. Now this hasn't been approved. This has been approved. No, this. Correct. But I mean the the building plan itself. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. The, what is we, the? Where's the plan for this? Is Sorry, go ahead. Said, do you know? Where's Where's the planning board on this? I mean, did, did they already approve yeah. the? We We have full site plan approval. All of this is approved. All we are asking for today is to lower the parking count. Okay, so the approval was for a hundred. Was for how many? One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Two per. Two per unit. Okay. And they and on their plans, which I'm trying to get you guys in the full size. They, they have it designed for 140. Okay. So this is a cost reduction request. Oh, no, I don't know if it's cost reduction. Sure he's, he's just said they don't have to pay oh, this much. Oh, they don't have to pay. I didn't know. I just said I didn't know. If it was yeah. But that's not a hardship. You can't create your own hardship. It's a, one is a 25% reduction in parking, and the other is a 37% reduction in parking area. So that's assuming people have cars according to what the study is saying. And it's assuming you have so many people per room. So here's a larger size, and I could go back again to look. But to Present look. description. But it does look like they were potentially going to leave part of it gravel anyways, but I'm not sure. That might just be presently what it is. There's the mill. And so this was at the Z, I'm getting this out of the ZBA approval, not the planning board. So I think I might have to go back. Do you guys Anything want the like planning? <laughs> Do you want the planning Well, it doesn't, board? it doesn't have all the, the drawings of all the, the spot. Yeah, but but, but, but what it, this, this is, this is here, right? This yeah. is this corner, right? Or the silo <coughs> is right here. So this goes flat up to here, but this says it's curved. And there's nothing here. There's, this says it looks like it's gravel here, and there's nothing. It goes up to here. There's nothing about this section here. So that's a slope. To point the, the plan as well that was approved is this, is called, this for this, here. called for the this. demolition of the silo where the, where the berm is there. Mm -hmm. We are planning to leave the berm, leave the silo, and leave all that as is. And so those two red squares, the right red square that was sent, that, that silo will stay there, and that hillside will stay there. But I'm not sure if that might be causing confusion because the silo isn't on that plan where... All right, what if it's, it's this? See, right here. So why, okay. 
So you're leaving the silo, you just said. Did I get that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So you can't use that area. All right. I uh, question if you could remove that berm anyway. The tech been approved. They said they were going to do it when they got approval from the planning board. Because the planning board approves it doesn't mean it's legal to do it. Because well, it's going to be the EA. It's going to be the... Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, Here's the, the planning, planning board approved it. Here's the, planning process. Here's the planning board. And one thing I will say, if they start changing the inside, they may have to go back to planning board. They you mean may. changing the number of units? Units, because they presented a certain makeup. I'm not sure about that, though. I might have to go to legal. Yeah, that's board, the board, really. that's We're not changing the number of units. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm probably wrong on that. No, the number of units. Yeah, Christina, we've, we've traded multiple emails where we went back and forth, and I sent, you sent me planning board approval. We've uh, gone back and forth. Absolutely, but part of planning board approval is uh, floor plans, and obviously okay. they're significantly changing. I don't think that meets the criteria. No. Absolutely not. I just so I don't think so. Planning board doesn't okay. have to look at floor plans. They may look at them, but they have. They to yes. What well, you could have say in the makeup of the plan based on this exception, if you were to give it, I believe you might have that authority. To like want more studios opposed to two bedroom. Okay. I don't, you, I don't think there's any say about what the interior yeah, makeup of the unit mix is. We've, we've, we've been approved for 70 apartments. Yeah. No, absolutely. I was not saying a reduction. Okay. I was saying a makeup for, for this variance. You so, know. Well, but yes, correct. You've got 70 units, but you've got an old program and a new program, which talks about number of beds, number of bedrooms. No. Mm -hmm. When you're basing this, this, this study about you know, what percentage of people have cars and oh. other things on the number of the, the makeup of the, the units. units. Okay. So he can't well, change. You're, sorry. Sorry. You've got 70 units, and if you decided you wanted 71, you have to go back to the planning board, right? As, I, I would just state absolutely. Uh, right. No, no, you wouldn't have to. But you would have to meet the burden of the two car. You would have to meet the the, okay. the requirements for two cars per. However, not, asking for this. We're not changing the unit total. Just to be I, clear, I know that. Change yeah. Units. Just asking. Just okay. composition. Okay. I, I was just stating that he was he was basing a lot of his statistics on the lower numbers on having studios. So let's just pretend. No, he's not saying he's doing this. They got rid of all studios and made them all one, you could potentially, his his argument tonight could, in theory, not vote as well. Because it wouldn't have, you know, if you made the studios into one bedroom. Yeah, you could say they're all studios, tomorrow makes them all three bedrooms, and it, it is It'd nothing. Be different circumstances, well, different, different requirements for parking space. Well, based on the no, argument. No, not for our zoning regulations. We're, we're being asked to, to Okay, we've got two so. things going on. We're being asked to accommodate 1.25 instead of 2.0 per dwelling unit. unit. Yep. So a three bedroom is still technically in the zoning considered a unit. Yeah. But even though understood. Yeah. Understood. But what is the requirement per unit that would drive the number of parking places? Is what I'm saying. He's two. kind of right. He's saying it's based on the different makeup of the. That you could that you could give a variance, right? Right. Okay. Because so <laughs> I'm, I'm a little unclear. So, did, did you say you have 88 parking spaces? Right. Presently, they have 140 approved and mapped out. 140 approved, but I'm saying and your, mapped out. Your new your new proposal is for 88 parking spaces. 105. Well, yeah, correct. The 1.2 1.26 ratio would give you 88 spaces. A 1.30 ratio would give you 91 spaces. A 1.5 ratio would give you 105 spaces. Currently, there are 90 bedrooms. Well, I would count one person per bedroom, and the possibility in a rural area, I mean, this is suburban. This is rural, suburban, I don't know how you would call it. But People have to commute. Yeah. They have to go some, they have to drive to go someplace. So. If there's a body in a bed, 
they got to have a parking space. So you got to have at least the one point at the minimum, the one point three, because you got ninety beds. Unless it's a child. Just that's it. Yes, well, well, I don't, just I don't care. It Let's out just there. take that's the best case scenario. Absolutely, yeah, I was I mean, just trying to add It's not going to be the best case. I, and I don't think I think else. I think the stats or the children would be relatively low. I was just saying there could be a child in a bed. Yeah, we might want to hold this. And it is common for, or there are instances where someone is renting a two bedroom by themselves. And the reason I sent the study was to also give some clarity is this is a workforce housing project that the car load is much less than a normal housing project. We're not going to see many people with two cars and we're going to see some people with zero cars potentially. And I, I'm not disagreeing with the, I would agree that generally speaking, having one space per bed would be a good parking count. I'm not going to sit here and say that doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, it. It's. I'm not saying that that's exactly going to happen. Obviously, you can yeah. have children, or you can have some other situations. But, you know, if if you had a. I don't know, if you had. If a, you're going by number of bedrooms, okay, you need at least, and you're going to use one parking space per bedroom. That's no, you can't do that. Uh, Again, what, what can I do that? That's a, you, have to, you, you have to start with what the zoning regulations requires, which is two parking spots uh, per apartment. And it doesn't matter if it's a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom, or four bedroom. Okay, but that means 140 parking places. Right. Okay. Um, and that's not what he's asking for. He's asking for a reduction in that. Right. Yes. Which we've done before. And, and, and we have. Yes. We have talked through the numbers. We haven't necessarily agreed at what was requested. We come up with something else. So I'm looking at on one end you got 140, and another end now we've got 88. So I'm trying to I, I, I understand where we're coming from. And he says that he's going to ask for 188, 1.25 per unit. 88, not 188. No, no, 1.25 parking places per unit right, we times 70 resulting in 88 parking places. Times 140, right? Okay. So, okay, it's a 37% reduction in parking capacity. Okay. 1.5 is a 25% reduction in parking capacity. And I'm just trying to get the numbers because we're going to talk about this. You know, we're going to come up with a solution. So on, am I am I am I wrong in this? No, you're not wrong. Okay. No, you're not wrong. So uh, so on Spring Street, we approved 1.69 per unit, and then on Sunapee Street for the nine unit report, we approved 1.5. Now, arguably, the Spring Street is most comparable to this. We're talking eight units as it was on. Okay. Also, with Spring Street, we had a discussion that they had areas they could convert into parking yes, if they needed. That to gravelly them. area. That right. Which, which is similar here. And we went to what? What was that? One point I six nine. One two, it's, I know it's, it was. On your, it's on the administrative review. The two other pieces that got the variance uh, summer, uh, spring, uh, Sunapee Street was 1.5, right, yeah, yeah. and uh, the workforce housing at Spring Street was 1.67. It, isn't it? Another thing to keep in mind, even though, you know, statistically, in some places, people don't have any cars. They're not in Manchester with public transportation. Oh. Control. Okay. Right, I don't like the car to get anywhere. Yeah, I don't buy the whole. You're right. So we can't car. assume. I know. We'll just assemble them. Go to uh, some will have no car. No. So. No, it's not. It's not workforce housing. They don't have a job. Right. For the rarity, they're going to work from home. If they don't have, if they don't have a job, you know, they don't qualify for being here anywhere. Correct. And just to throw this out, my son rents a two-bedroom, and he's by himself, and he doesn't have a car. Where? Well, where does he live? Helsinki. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's freaking awesome. That is awesome. Hey, yes. That's awesome. It's a five-minute walk to the train. You know, a ten-minute train. My stepdaughter doesn't like the brain. Oh, I know. Uh, that's not helping John. He also works from home three days a week. All right. I, I will okay. say you could have be a, a qualified for workforce housing. Just throwing it out there and work from home. You. Uh, yeah. Be a, right. I'm just saying so that might accom accommodate possibly like two people sharing a car. 
if one of them were just a pos just okay. throwing it out there. Some people also get picked up and driven to work. I know it's not common. I'm not disagreeing that most people in this area should have cars urban, but it's, we can't just assume that everyone, every bedroom is going to have a car. If, you know, can't live on both sides of this in terms of yeah. that argument. Is everybody good? Want to close it off to the board for discussion, or do you want to continue to ask questions? I make a motion. I, I think I have enough information. I know where I want. We are going to ask you to. Do. Okay. Uh, so I make a motion that we go in to deliberate right. as the board. Before we do that, I've got a question or so for John. If you if you get a reduction in parking and then find you don't have enough parking spaces, how much space do you have for expansion? Would you be open for that or? Yeah, I mean, I think the areas highlighted in that with the red square is exactly where the expansion parking would be. I would say that we would leave the berm and the silo, given where it is, and we have that expansion parking on the left side of the plan um, as you're coming down uh, off of Sunday Street or as you're headed out towards Cross Street there. All right. In the, uh, I, guess well, I mean, in the, in the case of the one point, if we're, if we're focused on the bedrooms, 91 spaces, is a 1.3. So in that case, each bedroom in the property would have a space to be 91. Um, and so to me, it's a fair range would be between 91 and 100. You know, it gives us each bedroom, as we've discussed, would have a parking spot and we'd have some extras for guests or in the case that there was some outlier, uh, we'd have a little bit of, of Additional. Okay, thank you. I have a question too. Why are we talking about decimal multipliers and dwellings and not parking places in particular? Like, why not call it 88? Why is this? Why this 1.2? Because we start from a 2.0. Yeah, so it's it's just okay. kind of giving you a mental right. range of that, how much the reduction that's, is. That's what I'm Curious about. Yeah. Okay. But, but he just gave hard too. numbers, which is helpful too. For my well, I, I, I've been converting. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. It's so hard. Either I have it all in front of me on the screen, so if you have a question about how many spaces is what ratio, I'm happy to answer that. That's why I've been trying to speak in both here, because the ratio is a math problem, not really a reality of well, I've parking. Been, I've been converting from from places to numbers as well. So I would be in my head thinking parking spots. Yeah, okay. And these parking spots are the legal spots for Newport? They're not going to ask for shortening them up next month? Well, they, you know what? I, I would have to go over with them that they're 9 by 20. We, we have a zoning requirement for the size of parking spots, which has to be followed. Or right, or which is... What which size is are the parking spots, John? 10 by 12. Uh, I mean, I, I would, this is an approved site plan that follows all the code and requirements. I, I don't, I just don't have that. Okay, that's fine. I don't have to keep. So, so this, is, too, but this is lay out. What, what is it? Is this no. you I don't know if this is possible, but since they're allowed to change any mix of bedrooms, yeah, is it possible to is it it request? 10 by 10. One parking spot per bedroom? 18 by 9. Because I'm just, I'm just saying, throwing it out okay. there. Never mind the ratio. Yeah. So I, I, well, I, I go along with the, okay, so when we get, no, did you, I did you have a question as to how big the, how big each of these parking spaces is? I know there's a zone, but is that? Well, assuming, assuming it got approved, right. the site plan got approved, it must have gotten approved based on our, regulation for yeah that's not true though because they spring street have. was the same way and the plan board approved it and it was wrong so then when they come back to fix it we just said well the plan board approved it, so well, wait. Us to fix it. it's sort of different you can approve a site plan they still have to follow our zoning code so uh, the the uh plan board can assume yeah, they're through. going to build to code they're assuming they're going to put in the fire alarms they're assuming they're going to assume and then if you don't build to code you have to ask for a variance yeah, I mean, the zoning board, 
I mean, looks at the ten. use of well, there's their ten, property. There's 10 and 20. I okay. think well, yep. planning board looks at the delivery. You look like you're right there, John. We just said another, you, you look, look, they look like they're 20 by 10. Yeah. We just said yeah. another case that, uh. 18 by 9, I think. Was, yeah, it was yeah. missed. It wasn't caught by planning. Yeah, we're, we're in the business itself. of following all, all, all the planning regulations. But yeah. I hear you. Some people don't. So I understand the question. Um, all right. So I made the motion. You a second to go in deliberation? I'm, I'm second it to go in okay. deliberation. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Who wants to go first? Well, I, just in re reviewing, we've done, two. you know, we've done two in the past that's gone down to 1.5. In my opinion, one was 1.67, one was 1.5. 1 Which is 1.5. Right, the point. lowest it's gone was 1.5 yes. per unit. I, I, I understand where he's coming from, um, but I think I would, I'm leaning in the direction of that 1.3 number for 91. And I know it sounds nuts because it's one parking space per bed instead of a unit. But if anything, you end up with a with an extra few, and I don't, it doesn't sound like that's a. 1.3 is, is how many? It, it, 91. 91. Okay, it comes so out the 91. Again, one units. per bed, bed, so to speak. So I just say that, so Spring Street to me is the most comparable to this project. The other yeah. Sunbury Street one is, is not, it's nine units versus right. 42 and, and 70. Um, and we gave them 1.67. Um, I know I'm not willing to drop that. I don't see the hardship in it. It's not a hardship if you create the hardship. It's not a hardship if it's a little payment's expensive. Well, that's not the zoning board's issue or the town of Newport's issue. That's the construction company's issue. Now, because precedent's been set with Spring Street, we do. I, I believe that we need to give some. Yes, but I'm not willing to give that low of a number um because once we said i also don't believe these studies because if you're working you, you're gonna have at least one car probably two cars because where we live there's no transportation no um, get around so that's my issue so i don't mind lowering it less than the two um based on our, our previous decisions we've made but 1.25 is extremely low yeah, and I then think it's going to set precedent for the next group to come in and be like, uh, we'd like to do a one parking spot or 0 0.6, 0 0.9, well, you know, whatever. Uh, we're not here to make it easier for contractors. We're here to follow and interpret the zoning laws. And some of the zoning laws are old, and we make decisions based on that, like, hey, well, this is crazy. Why are we doing this? But two poor units, not crazy, but I'm willing to go a little lower. But I think, I think the case here is we require a certain number of parking spaces to maintain order and so we don't get overflow on the streets and all. I don't think like we have out here. On street, <laughs> but we may get it on uh, cross street or right. and it's so well, tight down there as it is. So it's uh, it's a, in order to as I said to protect the overflow and provide some parking. Now certainly in a lot of cases, you know, requiring two parking spots if you have an apartment over a store downtown, you know, it's like you can see waving it, but yes. here you're out of ways and such. Uh, if we looked at, say, one point, uh, what did I say, you know, going down to 1.4 would give us 98 spots, 1.5 would give us 105. So those are numbers there. You know, but am, I, am I allowed to say anything? Not, no, no, not no, now. No. No. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Concern. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 no, you go. No. But I mean, it's, I mean, are we going to be real formal, or do we want to input at some point from John? Yeah, I mean, well, if I you just, guys are fine with it, I I just like to say that I your comment about precedent. Yeah. We're already, you know, precedent is is one point seven essentially. You know, one one hundredth less. Okay, that's what he came in at one point seven. That was the original request. That seemed to be adequate at the time, and it's been reduced twice. I don't feel comfortable about these numbers, about the you know, exact number of people who have cars, don't have cars. Uh, and to your point, overflow, overflow parking, and I don't believe that people are going to be parked. If people are parking in the lot and they shouldn't be there, 
I, I don't know. No one's gonna, something. But I, no one's going to park there. They shouldn't be there. Well, what are you yeah, going to do? No, I'm talking uh, overflow from tenant to too many cars. Well, right. that, that, but then yeah. they have a management company for that. That's something that you should park on a public street that's outside the management company. I, I know, but we're talking about, I'm, I'm concerned about latitude, you know, 1.7 is a, re, is a reduction from, you know, it's 15% reduction from what, what the zoning calls for. But it still gives more than the adequate for this idea of per bedroom. So, and we've already got a precedent. I don't really want to go lower for this case. Again, more like the one on Spring Street than the one on the other Street. thing with the one on Spring Street is that has a smaller parking space. Remember that? Yeah. yeah that was the nine by. So that was not us. That was that wasn't. Uh, so that no, was, that I, I understand yeah. that that's what happened. So they still they still got a reduction in parking spaces. Plus, plus they had a reduced size space size to begin space. with. But they did have that overflow area. Yeah, know, the gravel area or something like that. Yeah, that that the which, which we could also have. That that was counted in the one point six. Seven. What did I say? Spring one point six seven. One point six nine. One point six nine. That overflow is counted in that. Just so you know, it doesn't go above that. Yeah, I don't. Um, did you want the legend? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. That was what the board wants. I I don't. Yeah, I mean I don't care. I, you can talk. I mean I don't care. If they're not all paid. I don't. That doesn't. That's, again, to me, that's. Uh, there's no rule. It says have to be paid. I mean, yeah, I know it looks nicer, and it. I would like. Yeah, it looks nice. Paid, but you can plow in a. You can plow a gravel. Yeah, I do it all the time. I just know that if you look at this square here, yeah. especially, this is going to cost a huge amount of money, and that's why they don't want to do it because sure. it's a bank. There's no and it's requirement gonna, that they do it. That they that they pay it. Correct. Yeah. But they're going to have to. They'll probably pay it just because of. Okay. You're, yes, it's not our, it's not. I mean, if you prep it, you want to make sure it doesn't yes. collapse on you or such. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot with the fact that the right there, the river's right there. I mean, there's going to be a lot of... You're going to try and drop the but, street, you know. Like. But, again, yeah, the consideration is adequacy. Yeah, so... Uh, I would, I would... I don't know how we want to proceed here. I mean, uh, I well, it's weird because we go make a motion, or or we would have to go through each criteria. Okay. Now, and also, <laughs> does he get to have something else to say? Or uh, I'd like to address the cost thing if, if you guys are if you're okay with it. I don't think that that's our concern. No, we shouldn't take that. No, well, I mean, you're making you're making comments about how that's the driving force here, and it's not your concern, no, but it no, seems to be. No, I have not said anything about cost. I haven't. I, I don't. No, my thing is no, the me. hardship thing. So the hardship for you would be it costs more to do that, but that's not a hardship that gets passed for a variance. Mm -hmm. A hardship would be I don't have room for two cars in this, you know, law. I can only fit one, you know, stuff like that. Um, but it's. it's to say methodology is a smaller project that doesn't have a space, we'd be cutting into hillside and cutting into bank and cutting into uh, riverfront. And so that's not currently parked area, that's landscaped hillside and area. And this is a low income housing tax credit deal where the funding sources come in and budget and cost is, is as in every project, is very important. But in this case, we only have so much money to spend because we're limited from federal fund dollars. And so it is very important that budget stays because if budget goes over, project doesn't happen. And so right. I understand that. Here you, it's not your job to worry about our cost, but correct. We really want to make this project happen so this building doesn't continue to sit vacant. Um, and I hear you. It's not. A, I get what you're saying. I'm just trying to explain how important the costs actually are, and these costs being saved will go into the actual building, not for. Uh, retaining walls when we don't need spaces. And also, I understand that the study you guys are looking at doesn't seem to be jiving, I guess, but this is a study paid for by the New Hampshire Housing Authority about low-income housing deals, not market rate deals. 
And so I, I hear you that generally it all feels like everyone should have a car and people are going to have two cars, but that's not always the case. Okay. And I, and I think, Christina, the other project that's 1.69, isn't it 1.5 and it goes to 1.69 with the gravel spaces? No, I think it was... Crap, I, I didn't run the numbers. I think the gravel spaces, they required an additional of eight um, that brought you to the 1.69. So if you remove the eight from 42 units, hold on. He, he might have requested 1.5, and he didn't get it. Is that what he required? I have to... I don't remember. Hold you on. You told me that two, two projects had gotten 1.5, and those were the two that you mentioned, so I don't... No, I, sure I wrote, no, I wrote like you that. I wrote you in an email that one got one point yeah. five for the nine unit and a forty two unit got one point six seven. I, I have that okay. email specifically That's to right. you and I think and I can I attach the e six nine it's irrelevant. Or six nine, not six seven. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's ex so they were forty two units times two is eighty four. They now have sixty seven. Um for, so minus the eight, eighty-two, eighty-four times times point. Um. Oh, I know. I know it's not our our position. It's not. It's not our business to worry about what their expenses are. Um, but it is our business to look at the future of this city now. And we do have a building sitting there that's vacant. I, I, I've seen plans come across this table in the last two years that I haven't even seen groundbreaking yet. It's kind of mind-boggling. Everybody's in a hurry to do this development and nothing happens. So, you know, I, I can see, but I see your point when you're talking about if we give, you know, we go down to 1.3 and now somebody else comes in and you know, well, now we're going to make it 9 by 18 instead of 10 by 20, and we want to go, we're going to give you 1.5 or 1.7. You know, you're still, <laughs> you know, I, my daughter lives in a, in a place in Bristol, Connecticut, and her and her husband both have a vehicle. They need to have it. She goes one way to work, so he goes the other way to work. So does my daughter. I mean, you know, so, and, but then they're in, a, in an apartment, yep. two-bedroom apartment with a kid. So, you know, I know, I know that the study's been done and there's, the, you know, when you take the number of low-income housing people, you don't have a lot like living in New London. <laughs> so, Or Manchester. Well, Manchester you do. Manchester, I bet you have a lot of no, no, in terms of not bringing a vehicle. I thought that's where you Oh, oh okay. Actually, actually do London's trying to bring in workforce out. But they're, they are. They're the happens. problem is there's no public transportation. Right. So if you want to go somewhere, if you don't have a car, you, you can try to carpool, and we can think of all the logical ways to do it. But the reality of it is if, if, me, if we get a low-income housing, what's stopping, you know, a couple from you know splitting the cost from their for their rent with a two bedroom and having a friend stay there yeah I, I think one thing to keep in mind if we have a couple there that are both working workforce jobs they may not qualify for this. they may not they may qualify make too much so i don't know what but, the but needs yeah that's a, again a best case scenario i, I believe evan wrote just to fill in did come in and ask for 1.5 and you guys found a way, because with that upper road, for overflow to make it then to the 1.69 with the A. Right, so roughly, roughly, because I think they were looking to reduce like 21. Just so, uh, and I think they came in. They, we're definitely asking for lower than 1.69. And if I add the numbers, it was right around 1.5. Okay. 1.5 would be great. I, I'm, I'm just, candidly, I hear all of your points. They're all valid. I'm just hoping that you can see mine as well, and I, I, the last thing I want is for people to be here and not be able to get to work. And so at 1.5, we've got 105 spaces uh, with the potential that in the case there wasn't, we could find overflow. I, I mean, I just there's, there's a lot of space down there as is, and, you know, that's, the, 
that's kind of where my gut ends up after hearing everyone. I know that technically my gut doesn't matter. So what is considered low that. income housing? Well, I mean, what is the rent on a low-income housing? It's 60%. Can you explain the 60% of average median income, how that is? Yeah, so every, every year they release the average area income, and so everyone in this building will be making 60% of that. And so you have to be employed, and you've got to show income, and you've got to be making 60% of that. Depending upon how many people are in your household, that number moves up and down. So I think it's, if you're one, it's, Forty-five thousand dollars. If there's two people, it's sixty sixty-ish thousand dollars. It changes every year. So the rent rent is based upon that number. Average median. Yes. Average. So yes. you don't so really we, have a fixed we have a number. Study. Yeah, we have a housing study. They take the average rent for studios, one bedrooms, and then that rent is then um, calculated based off of that. So what's a two bedroom going to be? Do you know? I think it's. Uh, hold on, I got to get it up. I think it's twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Everything. And a one bed is one bed is nine hundred maybe. So the advantage of workforce housing is that if you're a single parent and you're working and you want to have a place and you can't afford fifteen hundred dollars a month, which is you know like what going right for places. They're higher. You than actually can have an apartment. So like, and I'm not against workforce housing because I think that's great. Um, but we just need to make sure that. We, yep. The parking is, I mean, I had a huge issue on Spring Street. Like, uh, we compromised. The whole size, the whole, that's irrelevant because it wasn't us. Yeah, well, we, we never didn't do it. it. It was, you know, the yeah. fact that they... I, honestly, yeah, I wouldn't approve of Like, no, you want a reduction in numbers? We're not going to now make them smaller for you. It is not our job to do your job for you, to make it easier for you. That is not the job of the zoning board or the planning board. Uh, we represent the town of Newport, the people that live in Newport. Um, like I said, on this case, precedent has been set, and to say no, you have to have 2.0. I don't. I mean, he could take us to court on that, and you're going to lose because you set precedent on Spring Street. Spring Street is the most comparable one to it. But if we keep lowering it, we yeah. just open the door. I think. I think another difference between the two, Spring Street is a whole new project. This is trying to utilize an existing facility with an existing amount of area for parking yeah this is a better parking this will yeah. be much better than spring yeah. street because of where it's located um despite what all the naysayers say about everyone leaving for work at the same time well just just square footage it's got much greater square footage right. than spring street um, um i just sort of have a procedural question here what are we asked to grant a variance we're asked to grant a variance to change from 2.0 per dwelling to do we decide that, what that is or is it so something specific ultimately we do we decide that we did that with spring street okay. All right. and but the one. The, right. we have to get through the answers on the street in order to make the decision and for me the hardship thing is the at the 1.25 well, I, I, yeah. I think, I think we heard that 1.5 is a more realistic. Yeah. Uh, request and how many spots was? And 1.5, they said, was 105. Right. Spots. And also, I think in the past, we've also had the condition that there's area that could be the overflow area that could be developed if it was needed. I think that was part of the Spring Street. Yeah. No, they so, mandated it. it. It is to be developed. The, the Spring Street one. Well, I think it was basically you have this you can do all that is there for overflow parking. People yes. will park there. And, you know, at some point if you need to pave it, you can, but it's there. It can just be, it's going to be gravel. Yeah, it's going right. to be like dirt, a gravel dr so a parking lot. Some of the contours here may not support that as much. This is was there a number? In terms of the overflow area, where the number of parking spaces specified, well, I think they estimated about eight or so. If I remember. Eight or so. Okay. But they estimated it. We just said overflow area, but we didn't say overflow area to be no yeah. less than so many. Well, Absolutely, it's a specific amount, okay. and it, and they're only allowed to build forty-two because when you're talking about parking, if you increase the units. You, th you then have to ask for more air. Sure. You can't. Sure. So they're stuck with their 70. So you don't have to worry about it all of a sudden, the opening and having 90 units. 
it can't be, because then they violate parking. Well, my my statement would be if you're worried that 1.5 is not enough and you need need overflow, why are you limiting it to one? Why not make it 1.7? I mean, it's it's uh, you know um, you know 14 units less or more rather uh, than it would be at one point. In case of trying to accommodate the hardship for the uh, applicant. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I'm just as, I'm just yeah. pointing this out. Uh, you know, if you're saying that one point one point five per dwelling for a total of one oh five, and we're still going to need to have some overflow capacity, why not just state it up front that you're going to give so many more units for parking places right, per unit? So many more parking places. The multiplier per unit gives more parking places. And that would be 1.7. So I don't think 1.5 is enough, given what's what we're talking about here. 2.0, that's a lot. But and you know, somebody's coming to us and asking for some, you know, accommodation. Well, you know, okay, I know we're, he, he's saying cost is not included in it, but I don't, hey, I, I want to see the development happen. I want to see things, people move into the town. I want to see a tax base come in here. And obviously, you know, we can have multiple kinds of tax base. I, They've been approved for 140 places. So, I mean, so if we reduce it to 1.7, 1.7 gets you to 122, I think, parking spaces. I get 119. Oh. 1.7 times 70? Yeah, it was on the last page of the. 140 times. Well, it's 119. Was it oh, 119? 119. Okay, that's even less. It says here would give. There would yes, be 122. The, right. He well, the application said that 1.7 with a request for 122. This is why I'm asking. You know, one is one is a multiplier per dwelling unit, and the other is actual number of parking places. So that was because of a double-digit decimal. 1.2 is 1.74, so it wasn't rounding up, but it was okay. rounding down to 1.7. 119 is 1.700. Correct. That's what I used for a yeah. multiplier. So, and I don't, I don't even think there was a fraction that had to be adjusted. Oh, here it is. The applicant. Yeah. Down. <laughs> if, if they were to re, okay, this is getting confusing because you're right. I don't think they are. But if they were to reduce the units, Which if we, if you did it by a multiplier. It would, they'd hit, if they were to, I don't think they are, but you're right. So I don't, no, you, you guys have to decide which way. Mm -hmm. I know, but I'm just saying if it happened to come, like during construction, things can happen and they could be like, oh, we're, we're not able to, build. I don't know. I'm just saying. We're only going to have 65 dwellings with units as opposed to 70. Is that just no, I was just stating. We're not changing the units. The units are staying at 70. Okay. They're not going down. We are three months away from someone finally closing on this and starting construction. And and again, the cost thing, I hear you, but this is the world of construction costs is crazy right now. And it's, uh, as you said, it's not your responsibility. but. But we don't. This but the same. Will, but the same token, we don't want to make it impossible for somebody to develop there here either. There, there's a reason this has been sitting there for the, exactly. Yeah. Because it's been too expensive to build, and the last person who tried to do what we were doing couldn't make it pencil because of cost overruns. And we've gotten it as f further than anyone. We've got three million dollars from New Hampshire Invest NH. We've got six point six coming in from the New Hampshire Housing Authority. We have a CDBG grant. We've been working on this for a year, and. And we're talking about 15 parking spaces potentially getting in the way of this. And we would have 105 spaces for 90 bedrooms, meaning every single person in a bedroom could have one and 15 guests. If that, if we're 
we're talking a 1.5. I also get taxes free for three years too in Newport. Okay, mm -hmm. one, one, one year. One year. One year. Three. Uh, still. I think it was three. Um, three years. I, three years. I, I, it was. It was three years. We qualified for fourteen. It was three years. Right. Oh, Claremont three just years. gave ten years for a few projects. They've got a mill that just got redone. It's market rate housing that doesn't have parking. They're renting it from a nearby parking facility. And I know we're, I mean, it's great we're getting those, those, those years, but that was something that was voted on by the town for this location, for that project. So I don't think we can be, it's not something we've done. That was a... No, it's not relevant to this. Yeah. I'm leaning toward the 1.5. Okay. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta agree. I'm, I don't think we're establishing a ridiculous precedent. I think it's... Okay. If they need more parking places, they can go to the planning board and get the size of the slots reduced and make more. If they need more parking <laughs> places, that they got more than enough undeveloped, not dealing with them, if you go with 1.7. They don't have to do anything. Okay? They don't have to. Uh, nobody's saying that they got to dig out the berms at, with 1.7. They are saying if, if we did 2.0, they would. So. I'm, I'm just yeah the 1.7 hardship of the and they're maintaining not even existing landscaping while limiting impermeable surface closer right. to the river right but I I don't I don't like the precedent personally that's, that's a big that's a big issue with me forever after but on the other hand, it's supposed to, this case should stand on its own. There we go. If it stands on its own, I would say, well, but it's two got, spots. We've got. Yeah. I mean, we're basically considering other. Yeah, considering it based on the precedent we set. Well, I, I don't agree with that. I think one point one point five to seven is fine, but I, I don't think you know one point two five. No, I wouldn't go that low. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, I was thinking 1.3 at first because you know you get one per bed, so to speak. But <coughs> I think we're close enough to the avenue deal with uh, a 1.5 number. Oh, 1.67 is avenue. Yeah, I know, but I'm not going to debate over 1.7 in a ratio. It's you know it's. How many parking spots is 1.5 per unit? 105. 105. And 1.7 is 119. 119. So it's a difference of 14. 14. And they cannot build more than the 70, just to make you yeah, feel right. comfortable. Right. Yeah, we're not worried about that. that. But, yeah. but there seems to be a question about is it going to be enough? There's going to, mm. there's going to be space to, to do more if they need more. If that's a possibility, why not start with more? They don't have to do anything. But they have, you know, it's in place. If it's if to, right from the right from the start. Now so we're saying we got to ask him for 119. They got to build the 119. Do they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have to build the site for them. Well, just like Avin Road is. Do they do well? They just no paving. They literally create pave and create 14 more parking places. Yes. Yeah. It does if not. We, we owe them to that. We just have, have to, to measure them out, and make sure they're 20 by 10. But they, they they said that one the point one point seven resulted in number of well they said one point seven then they said one hundred and twenty two which was doable which is what was asked for and doable without having to touch you know get the desire without removing a berm and trees near river edge which challenges the view shed of the mill across the river okay so this was doable according to this is it not doable and the same the there's same 1.5 there's a paper in there for 1.5 as well so that was they used the same they use the same it's the same, same, same thing so it allows so, us it saves us the parking along the back side of the but, property the left rectangle but 105 which is coming to the large hillside so what saves the 105 or 122? Um, 
it seems like you're still saving from having to do. So you're saying 122 still doesn't, they still don't have to touch this. It's Correct. This. Correct. That's what I'm getting from this. It's just, it's just less issue with 105. So I, I'm saying if they could do it no, with, with no, 122, they could. If you can get 105 or 122 out of this spot, yeah. then what's the big deal? You're still not touching that bank, which is the that's a huge deal. It's, that's the big deal, right. So why not go with 100 and, and 119? Because the property doesn't need 119. That's what we're talking about. It seems like we're getting off track of what the property actually needs. We were talking about bedrooms before and how many spaces. I am. But it seems the position is that just because I'm asking for something that it, we're, we don't want to give it because I submitted 1.7 and 1.5 and it's just do you think 105 spaces is enough spaces for this property? Okay. Irrespective of us potentially saving costs or cutting to the hillside, I provided a market study, I provide other things, and the feedback is I don't believe the market study. And then we say we need enough for the bedrooms, and we have enough for the bedrooms plus more. Right. And so I, I just we're not we're not speaking consistently. We're talking in okay. on different sides. We have one person who's I'm just confused as to where we're getting to. Because I believe the market study, and I, I'm not going to doubt the market study, but studies can be skewed based on the areas that they... That they yeah, did agreed. It's, so, general. it's a general study. But I didn't do this study. No, no, I, I, I understand that, John. Yeah. I'm not blaming you. I'm not pointing the yeah. finger at any point. Uh, it's in the deliberation. Um, so no, you want no comments? Yes. 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 We're, okay. we're done. Um, I, I guess we'll, what, we're going to end deliberation and we're going to vote? No, not yet. On motion. I mean, we're still deliberating. But I, I, <clears throat> I would go along with the 105. Uh, 1.5. I'm sorry, 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> spots. Yeah, let's deal with spots. Let's not deal with number. Just yeah. this is the amount of spots. Well, the 1, the 1.5, right? That's the one. That's the 105 spots, right? Yeah. 1.5. Be 105 parking spaces for 90 bedrooms. You know, has anyone thought of splitting the difference between the two sides? Yeah, I was thinking of 110. I, just throwing it out there, just to possibly break it. Just between 100 and between 1.7 and 1.5. Well, if you're going or with spaces, it would be one right. the middle between 119 and 105. I'd Honestly, a, just I'd the. Go to 110. What, 110 spaces? Yeah, correct. What's that for a number? Just so five extra spaces is what it is. Correct. Right. You know. One one nine. I could, I could, I could do that. Yeah. I think yeah. We could all. I think we could all do that. And what's that get us for a number? Like one ten. What so um. Uh, seventy divide. divided by one one zero. Get you to 0.64, 1.64 per unit. I hope I did that right. Did I do that right or did I do that wrong? It should be like 1.54 yeah, I mean, or something. There you go, 5.7. Yeah, because. Uh, oh, sorry, I was getting them wrong. 5 divided by 70 is, you know, like 8% or something. So it does the work back. 5.57. Times 70 is 109.9. Okay, so what's 1.8? 1.58 times 10. 70. Nice round number. But I agree. I think it should be a number of Just spots. a number. No confusion. Yes, yeah, straight number. 110 parking spots. Because that, no. yes. Thank Which you. gives them the variance. Right. Less than the two. Yes. A little more than 1.5, but. Still it's less than 1.6. 1.57 or something like that. Yeah. It comes out. Yes. To I mean, it's, 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 so it's in the middle. Spots, in accordance spots. With, with our zoning regulations. Yep. Yeah, like 1.572. Yeah. Like and, and I make a motion. We we need to go through the uh, five criteria. Yeah. The criteria. All right. Want to take on number one? Well, we'll the chairman goes to these now. 
Oh, that was a mistake. We all don't have to write anymore. You could all do one. That's no, another no, one. We'll do one. Not do that <laughs> you're you're, good, you're, at you're good at it. You're good at it. I would I'll make a motion that granting the variance would not be contrary to public interest because it uh, uh, it allows allows adequate parking and maintains the uh, existing landscape of the property. This is where you're supposed to say it any second. Uh, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number two. I guess I would make a motion that the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because of uh, the, the, uh, the number of places is at, at a minimum adequate for the needs of the project, the needs of the, of the, or let's say comparable to similar projects. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That would be good because we've already established that. Impressive. I'll second that. in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll make a motion that granting the variance would do substantial justice because it allows the uh, developer to develop the property and provide sufficient parking and maintain the uh, uh, landscape. Favor. Aye. I would make a motion that uh, uh, for the following reasons the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished uh, an occupied building uh, generating revenue uh, that is uh, done in a way that's uh, Attractive. Second. Aye. 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 It's not done writing. application of that provision to the property because the developer will provide sufficient parking for the expected number of uh, tenants and the proposed use is a reasonable one because there will be ample parking for all tenants on the property. I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we have, now we have to do the actual, right. Hey, uh, Bert. <laughs> Where are you? Mr. Chairman, can I join the board? No. Do I have Tim? Tim. May I join the board? I don't know if we can. No, or. because we're already we're, 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 we're almost done, but I won't mind it. Okay, here. <coughs> then, then, as, then as a citizen, <coughs> you went into deliberations. The law says <coughs> you don't take any more input. And I sat there and watched this. So, <coughs> if in fact the rules are not going to be followed, you have a problem. Because a citizen in this room many times is told not to speak during deliberations. 
So <clears throat> as I watch this, I say, wait a minute. So I would suggest to you that your decision that you are about to make right now, that you don't make it. Why? Because this has not been correct. At the beginning, it was, and then it deteriorated. And there were at least six interventions from on line. You're not wrong. Yeah, but we've done it before. You've done it before? So breaking the law, Jeff, is okay? When all of these other cases have come by and if they're done correctly? I mean, I've sat here on this side and fought for my life, for my business and et cetera, have, and not been able to speak. So are we going to throw the law book out and say we're going to run this like the Wild Wild West, Jeff? Come on, you're chairman of the Board of Select. You've been around long enough to know what the rules are here. I would just say that I do not believe that what happened influenced my decision. Also, we made a conscious decision to play his, more. Tough his point is that we shouldn't have done that. They thought that to make that determination. His, his contention is that that was not procedural. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the. But we agreed that it would be allowed. Right. Yeah. So the courts have ruled that when you go into the deliberative session, it's done. Nobody else can be heard. Why? Why is that? It is so that um, someone can't come into this room like I just did and derail the train. He had to come during the hearing. So the people that came during the hearing, when the hearing was over, the hearing was over. When the jury went out in the jury room, the lawyer can't come in and say, oh, by the way. I can think of two times I've been here, and it was a clarification, not an influencing thing. We now, typically ask, though. What's that? We typically ask the question. We don't well, get told the answer. Well, it, I... The only reason I agreed to this was that I thought that something specific and clarifying was going to be offered. That, I don't think that happened. Um, I think that... And juries can ask for clarification on, on a correct. subject. That's okay. correct. Right. So... But they cannot have just uh, uh, comments coming in from outside. Well, again, you know, the question is, does, is a fair verdict going to be rendered here despite all of this? I really don't want to do and sit through this again. No, I don't either. And I don't think, um, I don't think anything he said has really influenced me either. I mean, we've talked about what's going on and what the, what the reasoning is behind it and what we think is going to be a precedent that we're setting. I don't think, uh, you know, I the, only, the only solution to this is that we have to hear this again and be more. Um, no, we we go forward. If we render a verdict tonight, then it can be appealed, and then we can decide if we want to hear the hear the, hear it over. And if we do, we hear it over. If not, then you know who, there is the option they can take it to superior court. Who would make the appeal? It would go through, uh, an, an appeal would go through my office okay. that I help process. Then uh, you have a board meeting in private to, uh, no one can come to the appeal. And only the board can uh, speak. Actually, for, I apologize. People can come to the, uh, to the appeal and no one can speak except the board members. And they can't ask any questions. I will double confirm that. We had one appeal that I had for the workforce housing, and actually, yeah, and no one came. But even if they did, they could listen to your deliberations, but they were not allowed to interject or speak. And nor were residents or the pe person making the appeal, but I will definitely double check that. But I believe that's accurate. That right there, you take exception to that at the risk of offending somebody. A statement, I, well, I'll check into it. It's not concrete. 
I said I double checked. It, it, it is something else. The problem here is the law is clear. In deliberations, you are closed to input. Yes, you can ask, but I can prove to you clearly you didn't ask for much of what came here tonight. No. But no. You, oh, in, in the last hour. So that all being said, your best thing is to table this because it is wrong and at least Jeff knows it's wrong. So if there is no structure to it, then guess what? It all falls apart eventually. And why is it there? Why are all of the boards in this state, you're, I know you're chomping at the bit no, to, no, I'm, I'm, to come into it. No, I'm, all of the boards have to do the same thing. And those that don't are breaking the law. It's state law. So you can drive 60 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone because you think you can? Or what's the law there for? So pointing that out, I think that the only way to go, well, there's two ways to go forward with this. Either we drop it and have to hear it all over again and re-notify re and go through all the paperwork, or we continue the way we're going and then an appeal is made to, to, to I guess, to overturn the decision. Kid, what about Who would make an appeal to overturn the decision? This person sitting right here. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, that's why. I, I'm assuming <laughs> that. What, yes. what about his comment right now with you? With no Doesn't matter, we already did it with the other guy. So, so the only way to legally do it then is to say, all right, we'll rehear the case. Why would we accept and say, yep, yeah, we're going to approve all this and then it's going to be appealed. And like, so we're, we legitimately know that we did Six it one wrong, yeah. but we legitimately know we did it illegally. We decided to proceed anyways because, yeah, whatever. Or we say, me as vice chair, two, <laughs> two meetings and that's it. Uh, <laughs> you know, doesn't know that, no, 100%, this cannot, this is not supposed to happen. Then, like, I don't care if we have to hear it again. It's not. It's not about that. It's about making sure we do it legally and correctly. I, no. I, I saw two legal directions. Could make a decision and. But then we already been made aware that we were doing it illegally, and we decided. But now that we're being made, made no. aware that we're doing it illegally, so right. we table it. And we're either way, aware. there's. I'm not aware we're doing it illegally. We had one opinion that we're doing it illegally. Well, have you, deliberations can be open no, to, I, to import after they're in deliberations? It's a hard thing, but I even looked at you, Tim, at a point where I was like, you I know, need to I have a mute button. Yeah, it's yeah and I muted it. him. Yes. So, and I said, can I mute him? So I, I even felt like it got pretty argumentative. I, I don't disagree. But, but just, but so, uh, but I don't, it's up to you, but I, I muted uh, John, and actually that he unmuted himself because I felt like it was getting... Arg very argumentative during your deliberations. I so, but I asked you if I should do that. So I'm, I don't, I'm supposed to be. So. Well, but you're, you're. I know. You're I, administrative. Uh, but you uh, muted him, and then he unmuted himself. Yeah, because I, I asked you again. I'm like. I, he did. He unmuted himself. And so. Unmuted, yeah, and he can't can, again because I felt like I'm like, wow, this is not good. Mostly for him, I felt not. I felt it wasn't voting well for his getting what he wanted. I mean, so, but I'm not looking to save anyone, but that he did unmute himself, which I didn't know he could do if I muted him, but that's, and that didn't look good either. Well, then who is, if he unmuted himself? I thought me as the host could circumvent, because yeah, I, I did. But he, it's the equivalent of him not being quiet but when not asked listening, to be yes. quiet. Yeah, I know. So I know. what's our recourse you, that, you, you know, to that? You don't push. If he continues to speak, then you shut him off. Well, we did shut him off. And okay. He continued and then, to speak. And we also agreed to listen to him. Well, also. that's that, which to me is the heart of the matter. We agreed to listen to the guy. Yeah. And now we're not proper. We don't know that's so. for sure. Well, she said it was. Either way, it's going to be a contested verdict. So. Let's just nip it in the bud and say, fine, we have to rehear this and be more 
rigorous, I guess. In 1978, I went through this like you wouldn't believe it. And finally, at the, at the end of the whole thing, um, I learned a lesson. And take them to court the minute they screw up. Because it just, well, I don't, what, 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 I don't let, let me finish. I, I silently listen to you. Now let me finish, because here, in this setting right now, actually, I can be a board member. I could have sat in that seat if I came in during the meeting, just like as if I came in five minutes later. We had a but, the meeting. Yeah. but you guys made a decision. You wanted to finish what you were doing. I needed to point out to you that what you've done is wrong. And so that being the case, when you do something wrong, you have two choices you can make. Continue the wrong or correct the wrong. And good people correct it. And I don't mean you're bad people. But... No, so I say as acting chair that I make a motion that we continue this case till next month because we didn't uh, appeal. You know, we didn't follow the rules. I'll proper take blame procedure. for it. Proper procedure. Because now that we've been made aware of it, I will not just let it slide. Because well, who cares? Can, can I ask? Are we going to continue it, or are we going to rehear it? We're going to have to rehear it. Rehear it. Re because it. you have to do the whole thing all over again. That's what. I'm, that's. That's. Yes. Motion we vote on? Yes. Then I'll second. I, I was going to second. Okay. Motion. Sure. <laughs> so first, second. Need a vote. Aye. 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 No. All right. Three to one. You have that, Mara. Um. No. It, it took three no. Three yeses. Three to one. one. No. Yeah. Three ayes. Okay. I would say that. Was the second? I seconded it. Yes. I think in the future, and this is, I don't know when's a good time to say this, but I really feel like we need to have people presenting cases in front of us physically so that they can answer questions and point to They're things. They're entitled to do it over us. So. I thought that was only during COVID. I don't I believe. I think it's ever been revoked. It, it's not illegal to do this by any stretch, especially some people could be presenting from another state. So mandate, like from Cal, per, per se. So mandating that might be, but, but I don't think usually, obviously I do believe in person is very helpful for the board and the person. Right, Cause, and I also feel like technically I could just throw the case out from the start because I've got three different paperwork with different things and sort of. You yeah. wanna talk about procedural, none of that's legal. Well, no, that that he could. We he was asking for reduction, but but you you could you are you are the chair and you could be like I don't like that this happened, Christina, and you really only had two. But then he we never got the one point two five. You're right. I just feel like we need to make sure we do these with transparency and openness and and not confusion of like for us be, especially. I, then yeah. I will be more yeah. more attuned to that too because then that was I yeah. was le was lenient on saying you could you could request different numbers be, because you're asking for a reduction without a specific number you're just asking for a reduction on on the legal documents that I have to send out on so that it's not false advertising for any residents or anything well, in this case you shouldn't have to re You'll have to re-notice, but you won't have to re-certify notice or anything because I, we're continuing I, it, correct? No, or no. If it's a new couldn't case, they, couldn't they adjourn to a date certain? You could, yeah, I I think I guess you. Uh, then when they got there, well, it's got to be reheard. Right. So we, we, you know, it's almost like a new case, yeah. right? It's because, because when you if you're going to do that, you got to start from scratch. You couldn't start where you are now. Right, we have to start fresh. If if you if you just adjourn to a date certain, you couldn't start where you are now. You, Right. So no. Jeff, Jeff is correct that, that you have to do it over again. And I probably would to protect everyone involved and not at the expense of the applicant. Yes, I would. Yes, I, yes, I, yes. I would recertify everything. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't charge him for it. It's not right, right for him. It's right. Right. It's our, it's, it's and I'll it's take our error. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take part of the blame for this. I could have come. Well, I went in and had all of this stuff done. And uh, I just said I'd stay home for a night. And uh, now I'm sorry I did, and I apologize for that. No. That being said, uh, no. Now I know. It won't be an issue in the future. Right. I I I 
I thought we were. I think there's a body yeah. deliberating. I, 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 and, and again, you know, it's, it's this issue of can you make a, a nobody can make a truly impartial decision. We're not machines. Right. But there's no such make, thing as I a, as best you can. That's right. That I did not feel that this was. Non Winslow versus Holderness is just the decision the best you can to be impartial. It doesn't say you must absolutely be. It says the best you can. So we're trying to do the best we can, and I understand. And because we know what would happen if we just let it go, then I want to avoid that. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah, I, so let's rehear it and resubmit it at no cost to the to the client or to the, I'm sorry, to the, to the applicant, um, and move ahead. All right, that ends this one. John, I apologize. Some of that's my responsibility, not knowing the procedures as well as Ben, if he was here, but uh, we'll, we'll rehear this next month to avoid any uh, appeals and, and just not doing it the legal way. I understood I'll have one application for you. Right, yeah. Nice. That's that fine. Would be great. I appreciate everyone's time and, and listening. I'm sorry. I know I, well, I I know I overspoke. I didn't realize that I was doing that. So I will see you all in a month. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you all right. Have a great night. You as well. Did something have to be said about the other case? Yes. So. Yes. yes. We're not finished with yeah. our meeting by any stretch, right. no, John. No. no. Okay. So the next case. Case one one four two. Can I ask something just yes. as procedural? We're not on this case anymore. Can can a board member can a chairman eliminate a board member that comes prior to the meeting adjourning? Is that legal? Should a board member can come in late At any and time. be put on. But they but they also particularly in, in a selectman school board situation, yes. But in a situation where the case is being heard, I am not sure of that. Okay. I believe it I would not be right mind. because yeah, you haven't heard everything. He hasn't heard all of the things. Okay, I was just wondering. It would be an op it would be a, an opportunity for someone to dispute the result because someone right. came in. Right. And I could find out for sure. I just wanted to make sure I, I knew that legally. I wouldn't let him sit on it because we're already in it. Because. Right. I mean, I know that much. Like, okay, he knows half the information. Okay, but now this next case, you okay. can certainly sit. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's being continued. But so you have to call the case. Yes. Do you want to sit? Go in ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. I will. All right, you can seat sit right here. Excuse me. Just seat here. Package. I mean, well, I'll sit right here so I don't look like I'm all whatever because I got about nine. <laughs> all of this stuff, right? So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't see anything on the screen. I right? can't. <laughs> 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 All right. So case one one four two North Newport Land Holding Owner Avatar Agent Averill. Averill. I'm sorry. Avatar. Avatar is in here. Yes. Uh, yep. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. The the owner, uh, which of North Newport Land Holdings, uh, requested a continuance to March. 16th, 2023 at 6.30 at the board's approval, if, if you approve of that continuance. And that would be the next board meeting we have scheduled, is that correct? Yes, that's, I wrote it, and so we never have to, so I don't have to look it up. And I think they were lacking some information that I said could not come in late because you would not have time to review, and they felt like they had a much lesser of a stance, and I, I held to not taking in late information. So can I re what do you call it? Recuse myself? Can I? It's just voting on deferring it. I, did, I can, I'll vote on deferring it. I'll make a motion that we continue case 1142 one, 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 until the March 16th meeting at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Second. Second. For a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, when this case gets heard, I don't want to be part of that, so I want to recuse myself from that case. So, Christina, you can, you can at any time. 
Absolutely. Okay. You, uh, if you do it, but you never have to come to a meeting, Chris. No, no, it's not nothing but, to but do with the meeting. It's that case. I know, absolutely. Because but, I, I'm not going to be fair and partial. Okay, so, so that's absolutely. We talked about. Okay, so so I, you don't have to attend at all. But if you do attend because of other cases on the agenda, yes, I will. You will then just step out and recuse yourself. That's, that's all I. Yes. Okay. Can I ask? Now, if I had a company, I could not have sat on this. I said that. And, and that's yeah. also because I had told you that before. I told me that. And what I, but what I would have done is I would have been here, and we would have that would not happen. So uh, you'll sit on this one though, next month. Yes. Okay. So just make sure we have enough. And then can I ask sure. that? I do think it was done in good faith to, because he said he'd just like to clarify, but that it, yeah. the when it kept Admiral, going and, back and forth is Admiral when maybe maybe also for me, um, because. Uh, I mean, Evan. 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 This is the one for the airport, though, not yeah. for the right. Spring that's Street. A, that's the same one as Spring Street. It's the same, it's it's the same, same developer. It's the same developer. Yes. And okay. so I, I've, got, I've got to think that one out because what happened there was I got a call and I said, I can't talk to you. And the person was persistent and he said, let's do it hypothetically. And he went on and at the end of the conversation, I knew that I couldn't sit. And so I didn't sit on any of Avenue at all. This one was different. I did sit. You on did sit, one. and well, you the height adjust, very adjust. impartial. Yes, so obviously. I've been, I've been away. Yeah, I was there for that. As you sat on this one. Though. I am not against his development. I was against his height. Right. All he had to do was reduce it, reduce it. Uh, three feet, I guess, right? Because forty feet, feet the yeah. limit. He wanted That's three like feet. Two. They're coming back. And Sit. Right, yeah. and so but now that's I have to weigh that. Oh, well, because he's, he's going to change that. Again. I just wanted to see yeah. who's going to do Now he's going by other planning on it. Data that yeah. he's not fine. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. So, so we need to try to make sure we have everyone we can. So yeah, so Ben would be important. People intrusing themselves. Un unfortunately, both not unfor not unfortunately. That sounds that that obviously is negative. This next month's. Agenda will look exactly like this. One. Say, yes, this <laughs> this one will be continued, and then this one will be normal. P and you and we may have a additional yeah, one. Maybe so P potentially, I kind of hope really not. I might actually advise that they wait a month because they're going to be behind these two. Can you uh, request that people from the airport, that represent the airport, be here for that case? Oh, they will be. I cannot personally request anyone to be here, but no, I do know they will be, be here. And a matter of fact, for Avenue, you will have an administrative review done for their airport case, the which is odd. You don't normally get that. That's planning board, but I did one for this because it's so complicated, the height question. Uh, as far as new cases, I would prefer you don't ask them to put off a month if it impacts what they're trying to do. I would rather if we have cases that go into the night that we perhaps hold a special meeting so we can try to accommodate people and what they are trying to do during the convention. That's a good idea. Uh, absolutely. Leg Legally, I, I, cannot <laughs> make, I cannot make someone. I just might suggest you might be heard at 10 p.m. So well, what would your idea... If, if, if we have cases that take a Oh, just do that, another meeting. Do an additional meeting absolutely. That within that month. Month, so, absolutely. So people know what's going that, on. That they're not here till 11 right. waiting because for their Because people meeting. are planning for their construction. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can't force them to. I would just say, you're go but that's actually a good idea. When I know these two cases might be significantly time consuming. I would. I'd say I'm gonna. I'd probably write you guys all and say who could be, who could do an extra meeting, if possible. If yeah. not, I would add them at the bottom if there was time constraints. And what we would do, we would continue the meeting toward that other date, so things wouldn't have to be reposted. Uh, so. Right. And that has another asset to it, because if in fact you are this time of year, where construction season is beginning, it's important to some people. To <coughs> get it done. In October, it may not be so important because. Of winter. Right. That's absolutely true. And uh, and obviously, I would take the concerns of the applicant. Oh, absolutely. I would not just belittle whatever they're asking for, even if it's a small one, especially if it does have time constraints. I just was thinking, I wasn't thinking of automatically going to a special meeting, but that's actually a good idea because I know these cases will go, that this will be a late night. Also, 
also, you know, setting up a date, you know, for another meeting if we have to, you know, take into account if we have to hear their case before they go to planning board and make sure that that all we're not throwing that off by a cycle. Typically, it's big cases like this go to planning board, which John Leviticus just came here. He does not have to go. Uh, Avin will, but that's none of you really concern either. Whether right, you, but a lot yeah. of times they have to come here before they before go you to go planning to planning board. board. So we don't want to delay that cycle off so they miss absolutely the planning board. If we don't grant the variance, they, they can't. They don't go to planning board. Changes, right. but we don't know that until we hear the case. Right. And I don't have any. I don't have any knowledge of those coming along the pike. Okay. Usually, planning board is commer is always commercial construction. Typically, I I do have. No I might have knowledge of one. Carol Carol Con Okay, so let, I will absolutely. I'm going to figure this out. We might have two. I'm going to maybe you got an email requesting two ZBAs next month. Can anybody tell Alex that I got here in three and a half minutes? <laughs> Did you break the law? Of course not. <laughs> He didn't get caught. <laughs> the tree fell in the woods. Christina, I would just maybe point out to people applying for these that, you know, the board would prefer you be here physically. Absolutely. I asked John today, and he said he was ill. I was, I don't know where John lives, but I did ask, are you attending? I, I If anyone questions, I say it's so much better in person. I even think see people seem more likable in person, like even... I tried to turn the volume down. I think a lot of it, too, the, did the volume seem loud? I agree with you. I think when people talk normally, where it almost does, it, and then you talk over each other. So I will kind of make the point and uh, that, and most people, I'll say you can come in any way, and most people say, I will be there in person, because they know they don't have as much of an appeal. All right, you know, we have two papers, and we're like, you can't see, like, oh yeah, which one is it? Where I don't think John's from around here. I think he's from Massachusetts. But I know. So I think that's what John Levitic is. Oh, okay. So I really think it was the opposite. At least somebody, even if it wasn't per se, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we have... Or this is very important. It's yeah. right flying for the night. Right. But yes, I will... I will. Right. I'll put that out there. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, no other cases? Motion. Anything else, Christine? Absolutely not. All right. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are done. This is your... Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want me to just take all this and then we get a whole new clean of cases for everyone? Does it? Don't take the papers. Okay. You're going to get all new clean ones with... with maybe. I would love this, this. Is this going to be part of it? Yeah. You know what, just give me everything and then I'm going to make sure you guys, because you're supposed to start clean too, yeah. like in your brain. Okay. Sorry about that. I mean, I don't, I'm like, I wouldn't first start.